What's up guys, welcome back, this is Zobernight here, your Tekken Games Crusader, and we are getting ready to get into the uh, Terra Onion Direct, first event that they are doing. Let's go ahead and uh, get this underway, go ahead and shrink me down real fast. Yeah, let's uh, see what they have to show. And this is a post E3 event, and it is uh, premiering on Fate Power on uh, YouTube today. So, and if you're not familiar with this company, they make the uh, SS. DS3 for the Turbo Graphics that you can be able to play the, uh, it's basically an optical drive emulator that lets you play all of the uh, Turbo Duo, Turbo Graphics CD games, PC Engine CD games. Hello everyone, this is Alex and welcome to Terranion FPGA Direct. Back in October 2016, we found the Terranion SL an engineering company focused on retro gaming, founded by retro gaming fans to deliver CD innovative CD in the retro background. gaming products. To achieve this, we have a Skylet team composed of hardware and software engineers, experts in classic systems, emulation, and embedded systems. We develop all of the different parts of our products, and our skill set is composed of schematics design, PCB layout design, FPGA coding in VHDL and Verilog, mm. MCU coding in C, desktop application coding in C Sharp, cells design, injection mold design, package design, integral production management, and sourcing of the different parts. Our first project was NeoSD. NeoSD is an FPGA cartridge emulator for the Neo Geo and was released in two different forms, NeoSD AS for the home console and NeoSD MBS for the arcade boards. Nice. Our goal with this project was to deliver a cartridge emulator that would emulate all the different types of custom chips present on the Neo Geo game cartridge using FPGAs. It will transfer the ROM data from the microSD card to the internal cartridge rewritable memory, so collectors could keep playing their games while they preserve the original media in the best possible condition. That's pretty cool. The main object of the project was accuracy and bringing players the same experience they have with the original cartridge. To achieve this, we decided to use flash memory instead of RAM memory. The largest Neo Geo game is 96 megabytes, compared with the biggest Mega Drive game that is just 8 megabytes. So, achieving an instant loading method using RAM is not possible at all to, to the large amount of data that has to be transferred from the microSD card to the cartridge's internal memory. That's why we decided that flash memory was the better choice, because one is right and the cartridge can be powered and game persists in flash memory. This gives players the same plug-and-play experience as the original cartridge offers where you just turn on your Neo Geo and the game instantly boots. So it looks like they're reviewing all of their products is what it looks like this is going to be doing. So next product they should be showing should be the uh, Terra Onion SSDS. In the months following the new SD release, some users expressed their interest in a new SD like cartridge that will use RAM instead of flash, therefore allowing them fast switching among games, even the sum of multiple prime writing times will be bigger than on flash. In the summer of 2017, we started to develop a flash 
and RAM cartridge, one that will allow to store four times the biggest Neo Geo game on flash and one time on RAM. That will sum a total of five slots of 96 megabytes each, one independent RAM store, four fast switching games, and four independent flash slots for persistent instant on games storage. We call it this product Neo SD Pro, and it will contain a total of 480 megabytes of memory, which is five times the memory amount of the biggest Neo Geo game. The hardware design was so deep that it required a six layer circuit board with matched signals. Closed captions are on, uh, just March guess it's not picking it up. The product was ready to market, and after we announced it, we had planned a three months window for factory production, opening sales, and the start shipping the first units to customers about June 2018. What happened from March 2018 to January 2019 when we finally opened it, New SD Pro sales was something great and forced us to delay New SD Pro market release. Just after New SD Pro reveal, Rasola, the creator of custom Neo Geo BIOS Univius, contacted us with an idea. Now that you guys have a Neo Geo RAM card, why not make the Neo Geo CD games running on Ace of MBS? We instantly hmm. loved the idea of playing Samurai Saddam RGP on Ace, and this was something we really wanted. But there was an issue. The Neo SD Pro hardware, as it was designed to work as a regular card, didn't allow that, mainly because of the CDDA audio output and the writing of data to the full Neo Geo CD-RAM area. So the hardware and the software design had to be changed, and the whole Neo SD Pro launch will be delayed, but without it was worried. So we decided to update Neo SD Pro hardware and software design to nice. include all the necessary changes to run Neo Geo CD games. Even with the updated hardware, there were still a few challenges. First, there is no access to any uncompressed or analog audio output from the cartridge. So, in order to play CDDA, we used the ID PCM B channel that Neo Geo CD games don't use and made the FPGA and MCU to trick the Yamaha audio chip into thinking it's playing a long sample from ROM, but actually streaming the CDDA music while compressing it to the AD PCM in real time. Of course, this creates some limitations, as you aren't playing full quality CDDA audio anymore, and because of the AD PCM recompression, as there is only one channel, the audio is missed to mono, but it's still 45 kHz, so it sounds great. Another problem was the Neo Geo CD BIOS. A replacement BIOS had to be coded from scratch, so the games call it to thinking they are calling the original CD BIOS row times and redirecting the games to call those row times instead. That includes CD file reading, CDDA commands processing, that upload from main RAM to any of the Neo Geo CD RAM areas, memory card access simulation if users don't have an actual memory card plugged onto ACE or MBS, and some other things. We also wanted to support the original loading screens each Neo Geo CD game contain. So there was a lot of work to do, and here is where we could count on Rasola to use his knowledge of Neo Geo BIOS and Motorola 68K coding to help us with the creating oh, cool. an accurate replacement of the Neo Geo CD BIOS routines to use with Neo SD Pro. All those chains were generic that will make many games work. But then there was another issue. Neo Geo CD memory map is slightly different than the MBS and ACE memory map. Neo Geo CD has a continuous 1 megabyte area for RAM, mapped huh. at 100,000 H, <coughs> while on MBS ACE there is only 64K there. And the banks area that we can read and write with the new hardware added to the new SD Pro is not located at the same address is located as at 
100,000 H instead of 100,000 H. So for many games, this needs to be remapped while loading from CD when the game uses that data. This forces us to create a special Neo file for each game that contains the remapping of the addresses specific for each game. And this was a big task that required a huge amount of time. Also, the addresses in the Neo Geo CD that correspond to the ROM addresses in MVA's Ace are run and thus retarded on Neo Geo CD, but there are no signals in MVS Ace cartridge connector to allow writing there. So the games that are writing there usually to build the CD file loading list needed that block remaped to RAM where it can be read and writing. All of this work ended up causing a seven month delay of the new SD Pro launch. Great news is that from today there is a new firmware update available for free to all new SD Pro users nice. and are playing Neo Geo CD games on Neo Geo AES and MBS. On top of this, we have also added all possible with new SD hardware, new software functions Neo CD Pro has into regular Neo SD, such as cheats and in-game menu, because our goal is always to deliver as much as possible to all of products. In addition to the Neo Geo CD firmware, the first set of custom Neo Geo CD Neo files are also available at our downloads section. Those Neo files don't contain any copyrighted material and will require a Bing image of the original Neo Geo CD game to be placed on the root of the microSD card that Neo SD users can create from their original Neo Geo CD discs. This first set of Neo files contain the most challenging to adapt games such as Samurai Sadon RPG, Neo Turf Masters, Thin Trick, Iron Clan, and much more. I hope you guys enjoy this awesome milestone. Playing Neo Geo CD games on Ace and MVS with loading time reduced to just like a Sam show RPG. It's an amazing user experience. Lastly, we would like to thank Rasula for all the amazing work and feedback he has provided use, as most of the work on Neo Geo CD games Neo files has been done by him. And to recommend everyone owing a Neo Geo AS or MBS to install a Unibios chip. If you still don't have it, it's an awesome addition to your Neo Geo. Both regular Neo SD and Neo SD Pro in the two different variants, AS for the home console and MBS for the arcade boards are available at our shop on the link below. Univios, Neo Geo Custom BIOS, can be archived on the link below. I would also like to remind everyone that all of our different Neo SD and Neo SD Pro versions are fully compatible with the read Univios. Okay. So are they showing the new SSD S3? Okay. So after <laughs> all the new Geo CD excitement, it's or time to talk about our second SDS. project. Super SD System 3, the PC Engine All-in-One Optical Disk Emulator. But first, let's have a recap about what the PC Engine is. PC Engine is a console related to the Japanese market in 1987. There was an overseas release in USA. And Maybe they'll Europe. release a white one so it matches the, the system. Of TurboGrafx 16 with a much more reduced catalog. So let's focus on the original and more extensive Japanese catalog. The PC Engine catalog is composed of five different media types, each requiring different hardware or add ons. Those are who cared? The regular cartridge games in a card format. Those can be played on any of the different PC engines, basset consoles. 
CD ROM 2. Those games were released on CD format and required one of the different CD drive add ons with at least 64K of RAM memory among a system card in Hue card format containing the required BIOS to be run. Super CD ROM 2, same CD format at CD ROM 2 games, but requiring 192K of RAM memory instead of the base 64K. This additional RAM can be acquired by using a system card or container. So, Revision B is what the recording is on. Models. That's cool. Arcade CD ROM 2. Like the two previous CD formats, the required RAM memory has been raised to 2 megabytes, and the only way to play those games is by adquiring the expensive arcade card. Supergraphs Hue card. Same format as regular Hue cards, but requires an upgraded console model called Supergraphs. In addition, the PC Engine lacks RGB output, so we decided to build a device that will support all those different game formats and nice. also contain a built-in RGB output. Super SD System 3 plugs into the expansion port of the PC Engine and the rest of the different models that have an expansion port, allowing to play those PC Engine media formats from the internal SD card port while having a built-in RGB output and without requiring any additional hardware such as the different CD-ROM drives or system cards. Only the seven related Supergraphs Hue card games require an actual Supergraphs console in order to be played. Super SD System 3 emulates all the hardware inside next CD-ROM drive add-ons using a mix of FPGA and MCU code. The cool. FPGA does the interface to the extra RAM inside the CD-ROM drive and also for the RAM that is present in the system card and the arcade card. At the same time, it implements the SCSI interface of the original CD controller and requests the MCU to read and set back sector data while it buffers so the PC engine can read it. The FPGA also forwards the ADPCM reads and writes those to the MCU. The MCU handles the sector request, reading the data from a BIN or ISO CDA image file and send it back. At the same time, it also performs ADPCM audio decoding and mixes it with the CDDA audio from the CD image file that is buffered inside the FPGA and send it to the DAC for mixing the PC Engine audio. As a yeah, nice that device is roughly $300, allows for but the trying to find a functional into the SD um, card, ter graphics or uh, Turbo and CD or PC Engine uh, drive and, games to and the base and everything card. is about the same Over price the or more, months, we so have been it's definitely worth it. The quality of the audio and <coughs> RGB video output signals with the help of some skilled technicians. We would like to say thanks to Voltar for yes, signing with Voltar us got a shout RGB out. Awesome. Design, Firebrand X for Firebrand got a shout out. His audio bypass design and Mobius strip touch for validating our new BOA revision. Nice. Thanks, guys. Your know how have made Super SD System 3 video and audio put better. So do they have an integrated one that has those fixes on it for revision or something? What's next? Yes, tell me what's next. That's what I want to know. Okay, after all those wonderful products, what? most of you were wondering what's next. And what's next is the hardest project we have ever worked on. Just after Super Sega CD market release, emulator? people started asking us to develop a similar product for Mega CD. The main issue with Sega CD is that it's more a console itself 
rather than a CD-ROM drive add-on like the PC Engine CD-ROM drives are. Mega CD motherboard contains a Motorola 68K processor, a custom VDP graphics processor that most Mega CD games use for 3D likes rotations, among with audio hardware and CD-ROM drive controller chips. So even if it's a CD add-on, it's more like a separated console because it has its own processor, graphics processor, and CD-ROM drive controller. Everything is integrated on a single printed circuit board, so the only way to make a similar solders plug-and-play solution like the Super SD System 3 was to make a complete FPGA Mega CD console. Oh, one wow. that wall contains all the original Mega CD hardware replicated into a FPGA and works with all the existing Mega Drive and Genesis consoles. So we did. I am happy to introduce you Mega SD, a FPGA wow. Mega CD in a Mega Drive cartridge form. Holy crap! It is working on a on a Nomad. That's freaking awesome. Holy crap. Wow. Wow. The Mega SD project started back in October 2016, just after NeoSD was introduced to the market, and it took two and a half years to be completed. Wow. Mega SD was our hardest project to develop because it's not just an optical Holy disc crap. emulator as some people might think. The Sega that CD plus is an analog a complete um, console. Mega it SD is, faster than the Mega is Drive crazy 1, to think and about. And a GPU capable of drawing scaled and rotated graphics. So it required a lot of effort to accurately simulate all that hardware into a single cartridge. Nice. It also contains a lot of RAM in multiple buses that can be accessed simultaneously. That's why you will not tie several RAM chips in the cartridge instead of using a large one. Mega SD's FPGA contains ah, a it's Motorola a Six. CCAK software core running at 12.5 MHz. This core is accurate and able to run all games as a real CCAK. So it's an upgraded K version of what's in the Turbo, uh, by the, the SSD S3. Like auto vectored interrupt, interrupt ACK cycles two-wire bus arbitration and others. It's connected to 8 megabyte of SRAM with only 512 megabytes being used for Sega CD program RAM. Fatal and Fury looks really crispy. 56 kilobyte of fast RAM used as war RAM. Oh, cool. Unlike the Sega CD, there is only a RAM chip used for war RAM, so when the main 68K that is present on the Mega Drive and the sub 68K that is present on the Mega CD both access it, it's multiplexed. But at this RAM is 10 times faster than the real Sega CD CD RAM. Nice. There are no extra weight states required. Furthermore, accesses had to be slowed down to simulate the long access time in the Sega CD that causes Mega CD processor VDP to lag by one doing DMA Night transfers trap. from War RAM. Uh, pitfall. Uh, the War RAM bank switching is also implemented on the FPGA with at least knowing quirks and verified to behave the same than the real hardware. That's awesome. Then we have the GPU. It's capable of rendering rotated and scaled telemaps to the War RAM in a format compatible I with like the menu. VDP. So the main 68K processor just needs to transfer them Holy to crap, the it can play Game Gear DVD games! Assist to display. The most complex part of the GPU is the access arbitration, because it's possible to have the sub 68K, DMA and GPU all accessing the same RAM at the same time. Also, the GPU 
can do real modified right accesses to the world RAM in order to skip drying on already drawn pixels. This all creates a complex system of priority arbitration that must be properly handled. On the sound side, the audio chip is not too difficult to simulate. It's an 8-channel, 8-bit signed sampler player that plays the audio from its own dedicated RAM. It has the added difficulty that the 68K can write and DMA data while it's playing, so it's nice to multiplex the accesses to the RAM. And then, of course, there is the CD-ROM interface. It can be divided in two parts. The CD controller, CDC, and the CD drive, CDD. The CDC is a standard CD controller from Sanyo that receives the raw CD sector data and performs the coding and error correction. I like that, look. It contains 16 I like bytes the old, of RAM, um, where it can store Sega up to grid six raw design. sectors, so it's able to receive more sectors while the sub-68K is reading the previously received ones. The tricky part on the CD-ROM is having data being sent at the proper speed, as some games are designed to keep the CD-ROM streaming data continuously and sending data too fast will there cause the sector buffer to warp around before the 68K has read the data. That's also uh, why the dragon. 68K is needed, so they properly sync with the real speed. Nice. All the previously parts are implemented <coughs> inside the FPGA, in synthesized hardware, so everything runs in parallel like in the real Sega CD. No software emulation. Nice. And finally, the CDD is the server drive controller and is implemented on the Mega SD's MCU element. The FPGA paces the CDD command as is, as in the real Sega CD, where they are handled by a separated 4-bit MCU to the CDD. That process compatible with all Mega Drive models. Well, of course, since Command they showed it with a Nomad. And retrieving start playing at a given sector. Pause playing. Oh. These commands are hundred. Yes! Compatible with analog MCU. and Mega when SG. That's awesome. The MCU will start sending sector data at the proper speed to the FPGA to be stored in the CDC sector buffer. Having everything room in sync was a very hard task. The day that Sonic CD voted in the intro screen, it was an amazing day. Once we had so. the first prototypes running, we had to choose to make a device that would plug into Mega Drive's expansion port, like the original Mega CD DOS, or to pack it into a cartridge form. Alex Kidd. What solutions have pros and cons? The pros about the cartridge port are that regular Master System and Mega Drive games can be loaded and played. Nice. Master System games can be played from it, while it's not possible from the expansion port. Also, there is a ROM size limit on the expansion port that won't allow ROMs bigger than 256 kilobytes ah, to be okay. launched from it. This applies to both. 32X and Mega Drive game ROMs. Also, as the cartridge connector has two pins to input the stereo analog audio to the Mega Drive mixing circuit, we can use them for the sound chip and CDDA audio. This audio is output at CD quality, 44 kHz stereo, 16 byte, using a high quality audio amp circuit designed by Firebrand X who also helped us to improve the Super SD System 3 audio. So it audio. sounds like they used one of his bypass, about uh, brand triple X bypass X chips. At his Twitter. He has done <coughs> amazing work to improve Mega Drive audio with his own crystal clear audio modification board. The cons of the cartridge port are that the only six Sega CD 32X games can be run from it, because when the cartridge is plugged, through the 32X accesses to the Mega Drive memory addresses where the Sega CD registers are stored is blocked by the 32X circuitry, and so it's not possible to communicate with the Sega CD through the 32X. 
good news mm. is that we designed Mega CD to be able to be plugged into the expansion port as well. This will just require a passive adapter that we are considering to produce in the near future if there, are, if there is a no interest in those six cool. Sega CD 32X games. I would also like to mention that Mega CD is compatible with standard no CD 32X games if the user has the 32X hardware plugged into nice. the Mega Drive. CD games needed to be removed to be played because of the previously mentioned issues. Mega SD has been tested on different official Mega Drive models and as part of its design, it requires the audio input signals to be present in the cartridge port, just like the original Mega Drive and Mega Drive those designs have. On the Sega Nomad, Sega decided to not route those two pins from the cartridge to the audio missing circuit. So in order to get CD audio sound on Sega Nomad, the same mod that is required to get Master System FM sound on the Nomad has to be performed. It just constrains to wiring two pins with two wires. In addition to Mega SD, being able to play Master System, Mega Drive, Mega CD and 32X games, we have introduced a five type of game. We call this Mega Drive Plus games. This is similar to NSU1 games on the SNES. Those nice. are Mega Drive games modified to use Mega SD's CD audio hardware. Here is an example. All room Mega Drive That's awesome. I love it. That's you on SNES audio tracks. Get ready. Check out that sounds. That's awesome. I can imagine some of the other soundtracks for other games being in the CD audio format. <clears throat> or the CD digital audio format. Awesome. Mega SD production has already started and it will be shipped with a black transparent smoke cell with the same design as this prototype cell and with the same look and quality as the new SD Pro cells. It will be packaged into a premium box package. It's the size of a virtual racing Sega Genesis inbox, cartridge. And it will come with a manual and a sticker applet. That's awesome. I'm sold. <coughs> 400 gigabyte XFAT micro SD card support. Finally, I That's would like awesome. to say thanks to Alien PDX for designing the pixel art on our products, user interface, and to all our customers and partners that have made all these amazing products possible. NeoSD, Super SD System 3, NeoSD Pro, and Mega SD. Amazing times for retro gaming, and remember that the best is still coming. See you all in the next Terranium FPGA Direct video. Enjoy life and enjoy retro gaming. Okay, guys, uh, wow, they blew me away with that Sega CD, uh, or the Mega SD emulator of the optical drive, and basically my, um, Mega EverDrive, uh, is, um, obsolete now, so, I mean, it still works for what it does, but having cd digital audio msu quality tracks in games is going to be crazy um let's hide the bleach we're not doing bleach right now sorry about that guys um yeah that's holy crap like
I was like, okay, what are they going to do? They got a Sega Genesis set up here. Hmm. Sega CD? Are they doing an optical drive emulator? And then, of course, that's what we see. It's like, oh, well, let's just take this out of the way. What's this? It's a white cartridge? Hmm. And it works on Nomad. So I'm like, ah! <laughs> That's crazy! But yeah, that that is freaking awesome. I wonder what the pricing is going to be on it. That's what I'm curious about right now. Because they're products are not cheap but they're high quality um, I wouldn't say that they have as flawless a build quality as Crick's products with the, uh, the SNES um, or the SD to SNES and the um, the EverDrive series but they they put a lot of time into uh, R&D to be able to get their products really sound So yeah, if you're a fan of retro gaming and you want to preserve your collection Then this is the way to do it. This does not work with um, emulation hardware, but it does work with FPGA hardware like he said for the uh, The analog uh, mega SG I love that cartridge design. It's just a really smooth design. There's the product box. There's the back of the product box. So we have it says complete mega S or mega CD Sega CD hardware synthesized into FPGA. More than just an optical disc emulator, Mega SD contains all Sega CD hardware inside an FPGA, including Motorola 68K processor, proce uh, graphics processor, CD controller, and audio hardware. Plays everything from SD card. Mega SD plays all Sega CD, Mega CD ISOs, Mega Drive, Genesis ROMs, Master System ROMs, 32X ROMs, with exception of currently the um, restriction of the eight th that they mentioned and then Sega CD uh, 32X ISOs. Enhanced Mega Drive Genesis ROMs with audio CD. Mega SD allows Mega Drive Genesis ROMs to use built-in audio CD hardware to play in-game audio. That is freaking awesome. And then built-in Master System FM core best sound of any classic gaming you could ever get was the FM core from Master System. Mega SD includes a Master System sound core in order to enable FM sound in the supported games. Infinite CD backup saves space onto SD card. Mega SD duplicates internal backup RAM and the external backup RAM cartridge, saving separate files per game onto the micro SD card. All mappers and save chips supported. So let's uh, let's do uh, quarter playback. Mega SD duplicates all the different master system and Mega Drive Genesis cartridge mappers. For all the save chips present on cartridges without using batteries, everything is saved per game. So that's pretty cool. Let's see if they have anything in here for their website. They do. All right. So that that's pretty spectacular.
And then here's the mind blowing part, if I can find it. It works with analog Mega SG. So if you're into things that are emulation based like um, you know the at games uh, systems and stuff like that or that can play actual cartridges or the Polymega it does not work with that because those have uh, libraries in them specifically for those games that it looks to identify for. The Polymega in particular does. It would work with the at games because it does have an open emulation that it detects the game's ID rather than just the cartridge you're putting in. So if that's one of your methods you have for the 720p sake, then that would work. But it would not work with the Polymega due to it having a keyed library that it detects the cartridge inserted and reads from that rather than reading from the ID of the game. So, uh, yeah, guys. Uh, this is exciting times for some emulation stuff. And FPGA, which is hardware um, Im imitation, so it imitates and uh, replicates the ID of the hardware. But as he said with this, it's actually got more RAM than the original hardware, so it reduces load times even more than just being on an SD card and also it keeps it from having the original hardware hiccups that would inhibit things due to limited memory. Guys, um, this is Abernaut, your Tekken Games Crusader, signing out. Hope you guys have a good night, good day. Take care. We'll see you later.